last time, you remember, Natasha had made Boris a happy, happy heel by inquiring... But, Boris, what is your fiendish plan this time? I thought you'd never ask. And this one is a Lulu. Yes, you remember that according to Professor Von Beige's theory, the North Pole was so top-heavy with ice that the world was tilting over sideways and would soon have a new North Pole. And where will the new North Pole be? I give up, darling. Where? Right here, Natasha, on the island of Riki Tiki. In a couple of months, we'll be living at the North Pole. So? So? Who lives at the North Pole? I give you three guesses. Santa Claus, Judge Crater, and the Lane Sisters. Judge Crater and the Lane Sisters? I didn't want to waste the other two guesses, darling. Oh. So guess now who's going to be the new Santa Claus. Oh, not you, Boris. You're not just whistling on your charm, yeah? But for badness sake, why? Use your head, Natasha. Just think. First, I get to wear big white beard in disguise, no? I guess. Then, on Christmas Eve, I start having bulletproof sleigh and visit everybody's house. Down the chimney I go and... It's a... It's a... It's a... It's a... It's a... It's a... Ho, ho, ho! He came up! And for the first time in history, Santa Claus carries presents up the chimney instead of down. Oh, marvelous, darling. Say, I could even visit the First National Bank. Ho, 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 ho! Here's a Christmas card from old Santa. Season's greetings. Hand over the cash. But, but... but... What's the matter? You don't have the spirit of giving? But I thought... Uh... And don't try to ring the alarm. My elves got you covered. Just think, from now on, Santa goes back to North Pole with a sleigh full of loot. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, boys! Here's your coat. Thanks, Thanks sir. Uh, and remember, try to double-cross jelly old Santa and you go for a one-way sleigh ride. Yeah, sure, sure, sir, sure. sure. I tell you, Natasha, the Jingle Bell's racket is worth billions. Boris, this is the meanest, crookedest, most low-down thing you have ever done. I thought you'd like it. Unaware of all this, our boy Rocky the Flying Squirrel was still diving earthward, groggy from a blow on the head. Then at the last minute... Where am I? Uh oh <laughs> Gee, I must have blacked out for a second. I'd better land in that clearing until my head stops buzzing. Little did Rocky dream that that clearing was surrounded by the fierce natives of Ricky Ticky. Every native holding a sharp spear except for one who was holding a large pot and a cookbook. Meanwhile, back at the moose, Bullwinkle was having troubles of his own. Great gobs of gruffy dust. Things look mighty rugged down there. They did that, for Bullwinkle was headed straight down toward a swamp full of man-eating crocodiles. Yeah, and I got a hunch they're moose eaters, too. Well, there was only one thing for an intelligent, cool-headed moose to do. He tried to climb up inside his parachute. Of course, the parachute instantly collapsed on one side and slid sideways. Just enough sideways to carry Bullwinkle out of danger and let him land safely. No sooner had he hit the ground than... Bullwinkle! That's Rocky, and he's in trouble. Of course, Bullwinkle started off to Rocky's aid, but he'd forgotten all about his parachute, which at that moment enveloped him in yards and yards of yards and yards, so that he couldn't move. <laughs> well, it looks as if Rocky is really in a stew. Not yet, but it's only a matter of time. Be with us for our next Red Hot episode, Soup's On, or Rocky Goes to Pot. The travel books say that the South Pacific Island of Ricky Ticky is a land of nothing but fun, fun, fun. But in our last episode, Rocky was seized by natives who seemed to have some rather special dinner plans for him. And that's no fun, believe me. You hush mouth. No one's back talk from main course. Of course, Bullwinkle landed by parachute just a short distance away. But as he started to rock his aid, the chute landed on top of him, and he started to stagger about blindly. <laughs> and with our other two friends, the captain and the professor hung up in a wait-a-bit bush, things looked pretty gush. Awful for our side. Like it says, nothing but fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the clearing... Let's see. Who we invite to dinner, Sam? What about Naranutu tribe? We owe them dinner? Sure. You remember they have us over last month for roast brisket of missionary. Hmm. Think squirrel big enough to go around? Mm, better add more carrots, Mobutu. Who else we invite? I'd like to invite somebody. You? Who you invite? The United States Marines. <laughs> Squirrel, pretty good sport, huh? Very sweet kid. In fact, he's so sweet... You're gonna let me go? No, but maybe we serve you for dessert instead. Oh, boy. Yes, Rocky was in hot water, all right, all right. And he might have wound up as just another entry in the Ricky Ticky Fireside Cookbook if just then... <coughs> uh oh what that, Sam? Nothing human, you bet. <coughs> 
sound like great swamp spirit. Oh, come on, Mabuto. This 20th century. You got points, Sam. No great swamp spirit, huh? No. Then, then what that? Sure enough, coming at them out of the gloom was an eerie, shapeless figure. <laughs> well, no, just stand there, Mabutu. Come! I thought this was 20th century. It is, but how we know great swamp spirit count that high? You got points, Sam. And the terrified Rikitikians fled for the bush. But at that moment, the great swamp spirit tripped over a root. There was a tearing sound, and out popped none other than... Oh, Winkle, it was really you with your parachute draped over you. No, I'm going to write a letter to that company, and I'm... Gee, that was a brilliant idea. I'll tell them their ding-busted parachutes are a brilliant idea. Sure, those natives thought you were the great swamp spirit. Uh... Swamp spirit? Sure. It's a ghost that's all white and creepy looking. You, you mean like that thing there? Bowenko! Oh, get it! Oh! I tried to tell you that's your other foot. Yeah, I figured that. Only one thing bothers me. What's that? What are you doing in that silly bathtub? But this is... I know it isn't Saturday, so why the tub? But... Full of carrots, too. Oh, come on. Never thought you'd go hi-hat, Rocky. Hi-hat? You're the only fella I know who takes a 14-carat bath. <laughs> but while this gay badinage was taking place, the island of Ricky Ticky was swinging farther and further north. As a result, the temperature dropped suddenly, and our heroes found themselves in a very cold climate. Well, Winkle, the weather's changing. How can you tell? Well, the barometer pressure's dropping. Uh huh. And those are cirrus clouds up there. True. And besides, yes, yes. The water's frozen solid, and I can't get out of this pot. Oh, sainted and Agnes McGee. Is Rocky doomed to remain a talking ice cube till this story is over? We'll find out more in Snowbank Squirrel. Or Bullwinkle gets the drift. <laughs> <laughs>